Okay, so listen, I'm excited about this. Me and this girl have been talking before the camera started rolling. <laughs> I got to welcome Paige Hurd in the building. Paige, thank you so much Hi. for being here. First of all, a lot of people know you. We're going to get to it. You know what I'm saying? We're going to get to power. But first, I want to talk to you about one of our special K-Day artists that you guys may not know. I'm going to go ahead and put you on a little gem right now. But DMX mm-hmm. is your godfather. DMX, what's your godfather? Yes, we are getting right into it. Yeah, we're going to jump right yeah. into it. That's what I do. Listen, we're just going to keep it spicy right now. You met DMX on Cradle to the Grave, but what to me caught my attention is that you asked him yeah. to be your godfather. Mm-hmm. What was it that was just so special about him? Because a godfather is such a special role in our lives. Mm-hmm. You didn't mean it's something meaningful. So what was it about DMX that you're like, I'm going to ask this man to be my godfather? You know, I don't know. I was so young, right? So I wasn't listening to his music or anything. I knew, obviously, like, the hits. Right. But, again, his stuff was so vulgar that I wasn't able to listen to it. Um, So when I tested for Cradles to the Grave, we just instantly bonded. It was really weird. And then we had to do, like, daddy-daughter bonding before filming. So we spent a lot of time together. And... I just, at that time, you know, my parents had just divorced and we were in California. I didn't get to see my dad too much. Right. So I was like, will you be my dad? And my mom was like, Paige. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, will you? And he was like, oh my gosh, yes. And at the time, him, my godmother, Tashira, they had three boys. So Xavier was born, Tacoma, and Sean. And they hadn't had a girl yet. And they really oh, wanted yes. a girl really bad. And we all just fell in love with each other. So... That's how that started. And later on, Praise was born, my little god sister. So, yeah. Oh, my God. I I just asked. But you know what it is? There's something, there was something so godly about him, Mm -hmm. if I may, because we've had, you know, DMX perform at a lot of our concerts. And the one thing that I shared with you that I will share with you guys now is that, you know, I love the fact about DMX when we would be backstage. Backstage is so crazy before concert time. Mm -hmm. And he always prayed Mm -hmm. before he went on stage. That was his thing. But what I loved about DMX was that it didn't matter if you were a security guard working the stage. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter if you were a performer. It didn't matter if you were there with him. If you walked by, they're praying and you walked by, everybody held hands and prayed. That's how he was. He Mm -hmm. was very open to everybody Mm -hmm. and everybody did. And it was just a beautiful thing because it was like in that moment, it was just about pure love. Yeah. And, and that's what I remember about DMX. Yeah. That's what that's what I loved about him the most. That I was like, man, I got to see him backstage how he was. You know, a lot of you saw him on stage, but backstage was so amazing. amazing. Yeah. Yes. And, and I love that. What's your favorite memory of him? That was my favorite memory. Your favorite memory. <gasps> oh, there's so many. There's a lot of things. But there has to be one where you just like when you think about him, you instantly go back to that moment. Mm. Well, I mean, now when you reflect on it, because I don't, I don't have him anymore. There's so many that you just want to hold on to. Um, there's so many funny ones. So many like we were like best friends. Mm-hmm. So we did a lot of like funny stuff together. Where I got to see him in a habitat that like, you know, maybe not the greatest, but. Um, but I know a lot of people know DMX as being rough around the edges, and he was. But there was such an endearing side to him Mm -hmm. you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so like speak about that you know i want them to know that side of dmx well yeah i feel like the only thing rough about him was his voice there was (laughs) nothing rough about him um he loved dogs he loved people he was super nice to everybody uh we have so many good memories at cabrea off la brea that was like his favorite restaurant here yeah, and we would just go there and have You know you're going to have a lot of DMX fans eating there now. Yes. It's not there anymore. Oh, it's not there? Cabrera's not there anymore. Oh, man. Yeah, so Sorry, guys. We love that. He loves Saddle Ranch, though. Mm. So, yes. There you go. That was, ugh, I hate their food, but he <laughs> loved going there, and we just sit there and play pool all night. It was so annoying, but it was like, whatever. But I, a lot of good memories are like, I'll never forget when he had to do Coachella with Kanye. Oh, my God. Talk about that, girl. So the night before he was doing a show in Anaheim at House of Blues. And, of course, we stayed up all night. And um, we had to go to Coachella because he was doing Kanye's set. But, of course, we're late. And I'm talking late, late. So we drive a good 120 all the way down. No. To whatever the valley is. I don't know where Coachella is because I'm not Girls, been. like, past, like, Palm Springs. Yes. And, I'm, and so I don't trust their driving, right? Because I've had situations as a kid. Where like one time we were going to Six Flags, I just spoke about this in a recent review, and he 
misses the exit, and he doesn't go to the next exit. He stops in the middle of the freeway and reverses down an on-ramp. I'm like, sir, please. Yes. So I never trusted the driving, and they know that about me. Um, so I had I always drive my car, too. Right. And we're just going, like, 110, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. We get there, and then nick of time for him to get up there, do his prayer. And then, like, he's just not into stuff like this. He's like, we're leaving. I'm like, what? but we're not going to, like, Go hang out with. We just like, drove all the way over Kanye here. Yeah. Anything? No, we're leaving. We're gonna go to some little diner, and that's what we do. And like that was, you know, his happy spot. Um, so down to earth, though. So so down, down to earth. earth. Yeah. No, yeah. We have so many good. I'll never forget when he left me at the airport for two hours as I was a kid. Wait. I was waiting to be picked up for two hours, and I was in this like little holding cell. <laughs> Where was he at? He was home. I don't know where. But oh my it was god! In New York. It was like one of the first summers I spent out there with him. Um. I never forget awesome. one time we were in San Diego and he had some girl at the hotel and I didn't like her. <laughs> and so he kicked me out and had a driver drive me all the way back to LA because he was like, you are just being trouble. Like we have so many. Yes, moments. Things. Like yeah, real special yeah. godfather, goddaughter moments, yeah. you know. Yeah. Now, you being in the business, you've been a child actress, obviously. Um, and now being as an adult, I know there was some type of you know, like piece of advice, like cariño that he showed you in love, you know, gave you any piece of advice in this industry that you still carry to this day? Um, Cause they've been around for a while and like somebody like DMX has been around, they peep game and they, and, and they see different parts of this industry, Yeah, you know, and you being his goddaughter, I'm sure that he just loved you so much and he wanted to protect you. Yeah, no, he did. It was, um, a lot of our conversations were, a lot of things that were unsaid that I know he was saying to me because I was more protective of him. Really? Yeah. So I was definitely the bodyguard. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure when the girls came around, you're like, mm, I don't know about her. I did not play. <laughs> I was like, ill, stop. Like, right. I didn't play at all. But I, he really taught me without saying much, um, you know. We just got to not um, pour so much into other people who aren't going to pour into you because that's one thing I don't appreciate. And I really had a hard time when he passed away. I hated how the world was like, oh, we love you. Like, I was like, no, you guys don't. You guys ridiculed him and treated him horrible and terrible and all these things. And he was so loving and so kind. And I would watch people come to these shows and just take, 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 take. Mm. And nobody ever gave him anything. Um. And then, so then to see, like, when he passed, how everybody was acting, like, really bothered me. So I had to stay off social media for a good minute. Right. So I didn't react. And I remember there was one time I did react, and it, it <laughs> wasn't good. Um, but, yeah. That has to be the hard part, you yeah. know, for artists like him, because DMX was a legend. Let's, mm -hmm. you know, very iconic. Yes. I've seen it, too, just being around the music industry where, these artists, they have people there from in their own camp sometimes just taking and taking yeah. and taking. And yeah. it's like, damn. And you learn a lot about that. I mean, we all know, like, anytime there's a death in a family or something, you learn a lot about people. So even watching how that stuff was done, I'm like, he, to me, I always say, I don't feel like he got the treatment he deserved alive. And I definitely don't think he got it after death either. Right. So, like, one thing about me and, like, my God family, like, we're always going to ride and stand. Absolutely. And, you know, and when you talk about favorite memory now is coming back to me was the last time I got to see him, which was seven days before. Mm. Um, he'd never been to anything of mine, like my sweet 16 or like my 21st birthday. Like it's always busy or doing stuff. Or right. Some type of trouble. And um, it was really important that he came to. I had a dinner uh, celebrating like my 20 years, like an anniversary of being in the game. And after he passed, I learned a lot of people were like, he was very adamant about being there. He like was like, I have to go. I have to go. I can't let her down. I can't let her down. I thought that was very odd at the time, but I right. didn't think anything of it. And he showed up and he came. And that's like the pictures that we have that I use. It's actually on my chain here. Oh, I and love this that. was like our last moments together. And it's so odd because I watched the video back and Bob Marley's No Cry song is playing at the uh -huh. moment. And we're like hugging and dancing and looking at each other. And it's so wild because... Literally, like, he's saying bye mm. without me even realize he's saying bye. That's enough for a dental. Yeah. About it. No, no, no. I get it. I get it. So, yeah. Those are special moments. Yeah. You know what I mean? Thank you for sharing that with me. He, like I told you, you know, off camera, he was so special. 
you know, backstage. I just, I loved, I love seeing him pray. Now I see a lot of artists pray uh, uh, backstage, but I don't see a lot of artists that include people with them in oh, their yeah, prayers. Absolutely, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. To me, that's a special kind of person. Mm -hmm. You and know, he respects, you know, everybody's like their walks of life and everything. He just, it was his way of just like, let me just touch you real quick. And if you accept it, you accept it. If not, that's cool too, but like this is what we do over here. So. Yeah, and you know, even on stage, he would he would preach, you know, during his uh, his his performance. Yeah, and I loved it because he knew that he had a mic and he knew how powerful he was, and he had an audience right there. Mm -hmm. And guess what? He spoke the word of God. Okay. Yeah, to me that was so prayer. beautiful. Yes, yeah. I, I loved it. Now let's let, let's talk about Power Book Two because you know you star as the Rose Lauren, and a lot of people thought you were dead, but you're not. <laughs> nope. <laughs> and let me ask you. Going back to that, I know that power fans don't don't at me, please. But they're a crazy girl. They they are so invested in this show, yeah. which is a good thing, really. But how is it dealing with that? You know what I mean? With the power <laughs> fans coming at you as your character, um, it's hilarious because power fans are very flip floppy. You know, because again, I know what happens, so I just be sitting there, <laughs> like, oh, okay, cool. Um, you know, you watch them love you first two seasons and then boom, something happens. And I already knew because, again, it's filmed already. So I'm like, I'm not ready for this. No. You know, I'm not ready. And it got really bad at one point. Um, but now it's just to the point where it's like, it is what it is. Um, I just got to sit back and laugh. I, I, I know it gets bad and there has to be some point where you're like, man, they're they're a little crazy. But I also feel like that's a testimony to your acting and your character, and mm -hmm. you just really absorb it, you mm -hmm. know? And, and that's just what it is. Yeah. So I love that. And um, let me ask you, was it hard for you to tap into the role of Lauren? No, not necessarily. I think the biggest challenge um, for Lauren is I, I never got to go to college. I've been acting my whole life. So just understanding for me and just learning, like, the books we were reading because they tied into – the episodes and the messages of the episodes. Like right. to me, that was the only thing that I was like, let me go do my research and study those things or like those big words that she's using in canonical studies. Like I've never heard of this word. Um, <laughs> so, like, you know, just being completely honest, like everything else was pretty chill and like, Okay, I can handle that. So, no, it's not bad. And you, you talk about that because everybody, you know, a lot of people know you from Everybody Hates Chris. Mm -hmm. How was it um, transitioning from a child actor into an adult? Only because you have to share your personal life. You got to share your growth. You yeah. know, we're developing, we're growing, we're changing. It's yeah. what it is. But I don't have to do that in front of the world. Yeah. But you do. Like, how, how hard is that? Um, I think it's, it's rough for sure. Like, I don't recommend. You got to develop, like, a tough skin, right? Well, yeah, I don't recommend being a child actor ever. Like, when people come up to me, parents, like, I'm so honest. To That's evolve. good, like, though. And people... Yeah, I mean, sometimes it kills my PR team and, <laughs> and team uh, in general. But, like, I'm like, I'm just going to Kanye it out here. Um, when parents are like, oh, my God, how do I put my kid? I'm like, don't. Do Let it. them be kids for Let a little while. Let them, yes. And then, like, you know, teens, cool. Um, that's definitely hard. And it's funny because, you know, I have transitioned into an adult who's able to continue acting. But, like, I'm only playing like three years older than what I was playing as a kid. Oh my God. Yeah. When you think about it, I was thinking about it today. I was like, yeah, this is my adult career, but I'm still playing 18 years old. And I was playing 14, 15, 16 at that time. That's a trip. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, well, again, it's an adult career, but I haven't really transitioned into the adult stuff. I still look five years old. <laughs> It's okay. Girl. I know. It's, it's a, a good thing. Yeah, a you're good gonna thing. love it it's when you grow. Yes. I know. I know. You I hear are, it always. I promise you. <laughs> yes, you're gonna be like, oh, I'm okay I love with it. it. But that takes a lot of patience. Um, I am very grateful for that, and I am not mad at it. But in in this field, um, that's where the patience comes in because it's just like all about timing, um, waiting for the right roles. That has to be tough sometimes, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Like after everybody hates Chris, there were years that I didn't work. I would occasionally do a guest star on Hawaii Five-0, which I was super grateful for. And honestly, right, right after the show, I went and got a job at the mall. No way. Yeah, I went and worked at Abercrombie and Fitch. Get out of here. <laughs> Shout out to Abercrombie and Fitch. They actually have some pretty good cologne there. Yeah, well, we're not their friends, though, because they're a horrible company. <laughs> okay, so no, we're not shutting them yeah. out right now. But when you work there, can I ask you a question? <laughs> yeah. Um, from going from, from TV into, into working at the mall uh -huh. at Abercrombie and Fitch. Uh-huh. 
there has to be somewhat of a normalcy there for you. Like it wasn't yeah. a, a maybe a, a small breath of fresh air. Uh, no, 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 no breath of fresh air. But it was my dream to work Black Friday, and it was a I know it was your wait hold on yeah, it was your dream one of them yeah, and I did it. Oh my god, it was great. Um, and it was also a goal of mine to like. I really needed to go work a job. I just needed to know like what that was. I felt like I missed out on a lot of my childhood and normal things sometimes here and there. And it was just, I was like, I need to go do this. Uh, keeps you humble. It keeps you, you know, just grateful yeah. for the things that you do have. Keeps you um, tapped in, to be honest, too. 100%. Yes. And, you know, I got harassed and stuff. Of course, people come in like, why are you working here? I'm like, because it's. You don't get yeah, it. Yeah, you, you don't, don't understand. It. Yeah. I'm like, that one show doesn't mean I'm like a millionaire and I can just never work again. Right. Um, but yeah, I was like, Black Friday was my vibe. I was pumped. I didn't ask. I'm 11 surprised. 11 p.m. and got home at like 7.30 in the morning. I was, yeah, it was so fun. Girl, because when, <laughs> when I was in high school and I was working in the mall, I did not want to work Black Friday at all. I'd oh be God, like, I oh, so man, why they put me to work? Damn. I loved it. I was like, can I please? And shortly after that, I quit. I was like, okay. You're like, I did it. That's yep, it. I did everything I needed to do. I'm out of here. So without giving too much away, what can power fans expect from Lauren this season? Mm. You know, um, Lauren is just hopefully going to get her power back. No pun intended. Um, and I feel like we'll just, people think that, I just feel like people think Lauren is something that she's not. So I, I feel like we're just going to really see her. Um, Evolve, maybe? Kind of. Yeah. And just okay. kind of come into her own, make some decisions for herself, and just be a little stronger than what I feel like she's been portraying herself to be right now. No, I love that. That was yeah. that was a great answer. Yeah, without giving anything away. Without giving yeah, too much away. Who but knows? I just want to switch gears real quick on a personal note. Girl, love and lock up. We <laughs> both were talking about that. That's my show. That's my show, too. Listen. Um, what you think shorty. about... Uh, okay, come on. Let's talk about... Shorty, we love you over here. Yes, hey, Monique. And what's his name? Uh, Derek. 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 I'm mad I know that. Derek. I'm mad we even giving them time <laughs> right now. Or Derek, time. Monique. Right, Monique? Monique, I yes. Love, I love her. She don't want to hear it, though. She's listen, in love. Let me tell you, the scene. Which one, uh, though? I've Because I watch it, girl. I so love... I have to catch up a tad, mm -hmm. but the scene where they're driving away from whoever was in the car, and I don't even know who was in the car. Okay, so, uh, so was he it the was sisters? like, she thought it was the sisters, but it didn't, if I believe correctly, it ended up being his ex, like, parole officer or somebody. <gasps> yes, that's what he was saying. Or did you see the new clip of him, like, getting a text message and then running into the bathroom, and the whole family is fighting him for yes. his phone, and she finally gets in the she, bathroom? Yeah, I'm and like, it's a girl. And then it was a girl. Girl that he had met at the bar, and she's sending him like pictures, and yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. But it's so funny to me how he's like, <laughs> what? When he wanted to go to the mall, and he's just like a little kid who's like asking, like, can I go to the mall? I'm an Uber. It's like, why you got an Uber? Like, I'm an Uber, and he just sits there, and she's like, all right, go. And he like hops up like a kid and gets dressed really fast before yes. his mom says no again. Oh my god. I don't know. Well, did you see when he first got out, and then he had her? Take him to a restaurant. Yes, and I and think it was ate. like five hundred dollars. Yeah, he was like, "You gonna pay?" Like, Babe, yeah, you're yes, gonna get that. That like, pissed me off. Yes, I Ooh. was like, "Okay, yeah." Ooh. Or when he was upset with her because she was taking too long to find his documents when he was trying to open up a bank account. <laughs> like, sir, I need you to pipe down and sit down and relax. And wait. I don't like, know. I, listen, her family don't like him. His family don't like her. Like, and I don't know how you operate in that. Like, I don't think I could ever be with somebody whose family does not mess with me. Mm -mm. Not I don't at all. have time for those problems, like at all. I don't have time for you or your family. Speaking of family, you got that family J Lo glow, girl. I'm That's just my saying. Mom. I'm just saying. I was like, damn, her... she's J Loing it right now in the studio, you guys. I am her secret child. I love Jennifer and Lopez. Sorry that it's out, mom. But <laughs> she's like... amazing, right? No, yeah, my mom's incredible. <laughs> I love her. She's a strong woman. Um, like if she's your mom, she's gonna be my Thea. Yeah, you know what I mean. I, I love mean... my Thea. She is a hustler. She's out there inspiring young women yep. every day. Yep. I was going to say we're both Puerto Rican, but obviously because she's my mom. So that would make sense. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, I love my mom. 
Oh, you man. No, listen, I got to work with, uh, for her, actually, she had a show called The Collective on Nouveau TV, mm -hmm. and amazing. I mean, seriously, I learned a lot from her and Linda. Uh -huh. And just, like, you know, basically my worth. They showed me my worth. Yeah. And everybody's like, how did how was it working with Jennifer Lopez? And I'm like, honestly, she's freaking amazing. Yeah. Like, really. And she, you can tell, she's always business, always thinking, always 10 steps ahead. Mm -hmm. So, like, I love Jennifer Lopez. I ain't got nothing bad to say about that woman that one yep. was so good to me okay okay period no listen and before you go i gotta ask you something i mean we're just gonna question this right here okay. your ig handle is at thuggin it is oh it my is. i said oh she it really is. thuggin thuggin my managers called me today and they were like you know what our favorite part about this is is it's thuggin but then you say she who kneels before god can stand before anyone and i was like yeah they didn't tell you i'm like from the south side of heaven because there is a ghetto in heaven and that's where i'm from okay. like i will quote scripture but then you will get checked you know what I yes. mean? So it's like yes respectfully there is. but respectfully, you will in the name of jesus you that's know what, what i mean I'm like about. Cool <laughs> so yes that is that is my I name i love your instagram name <laughs> i was you. like at thuggin i love it Thank most you. thuggin thing about you Ooh. um you know i've changed my ways over the years <laughs> so right now the most thuggin thing about me ooh, would you know i don't know yeah i'm a changed woman I don't fight anymore. I don't get upset anymore. I just, that's going to be but it. Don't try but, her. Oh, it used to be bad. I'm not proud of it, but it used to be bad. Yeah. Well, you know, Latinas, you know, how that, we are. Part, yeah. that part. I'm like, oh, wow, that really is that side of me. That's right. so wild. Like putting no. all that together. I'm like, wow, that's spicy. People call me spicy all the time. I'm like, okay, I don't want to be that anymore. I'm just going to be calm and chill and collected. Spicy's good, though, sometimes. You know what I'm it saying? Is. It oh, is. Yeah. It, Spicy's good. It, it, Definitely, it happens here. So and there. before we leave right now, before this young thuggin leaves us, <laughs> Paige, let's go into your favorite DMX song. Why not? Um, okay. So I have two. Okay, one super meaningful, and the other one's just ratchet. Um, so my favorite is Right Wrong. It's tattooed on my side. We have matching tattoos. No, you don't. Yes. Oh, I so, love it. It's the song that plays at the end of Cradle to the Grave once we're reunited and we're walking off into like, it's not a sunset because it's nighttime and we're at an airplane thingy <laughs> port. So like it's we're just walking guys. off. Uh -huh. Yeah. But it's playing and um, he has it on his stomach in his handwriting. It's in his, it's identical. Um, so it's his handwriting on my side, and it says, the true worth of a man is not measured by what he does for himself, but what he does for someone else, which is what he says in the song. So, yeah, identical little tattoos that we have here. So that's, like, my favorite for that reason. And then my favorite go-to and karaoke is what these bitches want. Yeah. I don't you know if say, I was allowed to say no, that. No, yeah, what these oh. bitches want. What? Yeah. Yeah, we got to go bitches. into that. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we're going to go into both of them, though. But like you know what I'm saying? We're going to keep guys, it meaningful, but then we're going to turn it up right now. Exactly. Like, word for word, that's my stuff. Um, I need to put, like, a compilation video together. You should. I always record. Like, we, I have so many videos of performing it with him, and he's just looking at me like, you go, girl. Like, you, you yeah. should. And it's super cute. I have so much content. I don't know why I have, like, anxiety, like, posting it. Because it's personal. Have, yeah. It's I personal. I have a lot of stuff that but I'm, like, But you're going to release it when the time is right. Yeah. It has to be organic. It has to be right for you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, but when you do, girl, I'll be right there watching it. Okay. <laughs> hey! And I might repost it, okay? <laughs> Listen, make sure you guys follow her at Thuggin. And, of course, Paige Hurst, thank you so much thank for stopping you. by. Of we course. love you. K-Day's your home. You, you stop by anytime you want, girl. Thank you.